So, welcome students to the next class of introduction to nonlinear optics and needle application. So, in the last class we started uh, the evolution uh, process inside the DRO. So, this is lecture number 14. So, we will continue this topic. So, DRO the process of the DRO. So, again go back to the slides and we will find uh, uh, this relationship. Uh, this is a schematic figure of optical parametric oscillator and this optical parametric oscillator schematic figure in the left hand side is shown how the singly resonant oscillator is working. That one wave is uh, one wave of the frequency omega s is oscillating inside the cavity and as a result we will get one amplified wave which is omega s. And in doubly resonant oscillator two different frequencies signal and idler both uh, resonates. So, these two uh, are simultaneously resonate. So, since this is resonate simultaneously we need to find out what is the threshold condition. So, today our goal is to find out the threshold condition and in the singly resonate oscillator we have the gain like this. So, the threshold gain we figure out in terms of the cavity length and the, ref, uh, the reflectivity of the two mirrors and we have this expression in our hand and also in the previous class we find what is the round trip after round trip what is the expression of the field and with respect to the input field for two field ES and EI. So, this is the expression this is the expression we derived last day with the reflection matrix and uh, the corresponding propagation matrix this is a propagation matrix where A B C is represented in this term. So, in order to do that what we need to calculate what we need uh, what we have calculated that the we solve the differential equation of E s and E i and the field is now going from here to here and we tr find out what is the general form of the E for E s and E i. So, just solve the differential equation so that it becomes a function of z. After reflection it goes back and when it is goes back there is no change of the field because the phase matching is not there. So, unit matrix is associated and the reflection matrix is associated because there is a reflection and when it comes to this point again it will be reflected for the next mirror to, to start the next trip before starting the next round trip. So, this reflection basically gives uh, uh, basically given by this matrix. So, we have four matrix together and once we have four matrix together then this four matrix can com uh, combine and we can generate the relationship between the input and the output field and then we find what is the threshold condition to amplify the process. Well, for DRO if I go back and multiply all these matrices to make it uh, more concise then if you do we will find this matrix form. This is the com compact matrix for round trip. So, we will have one field here at this point and this point. After making a round trip what should be the value of the fields? What should be the functional form of the field of E s and E i together can be represented by this matrix, this master matrix. So, now once we have this matrix in our hand, so we can have a relationship between E s and E 0 and E i, E i z, E i z and uh, E i 0. So, E s z, E s 0 this from this relation we can have the condition of gain for E s in the similar way I can have the condition for gain of E i also. And what is the condition of uh, threshold condition for gain? The threshold condition for the gain is after making a round trip the value of this field at least should be equal to whatever the value we have at the starting point. So, if the loss is introduced then obviously because of the loss this field will having a reduced amplitude we will have amplitude which is reduced. But right now the loss is not there even if the loss is not there after making one round trip it is essential to find out what should be the value of the field at z 
should be equal to the value at input. So after making one round trip, if these two fields are at least same, we can say this is at least the condition where we should have some kind of amplification. So greater than these things will be amplification, equal to these things is the threshold condition. So now we know this quantity ESZ, EIZ star round trip is nothing but this matrix form. This is the condition or this is the expression that we have derived that should be equal to this value ES0, EI0 star. Now ES0, EI0 star and from this expression I can now have here A R S minus 1 B. So if I make it this side and then make uh, the related algebra I will have an expression something like this. So this matrix expression, expression suggests that if I need to have a non-trivial solution then the determinant of this quantity has to be 0. So what we are doing we have a round trip expression in our hand from this round trip expression we can try to find out the relationship between the field that is at z equal to 0 and the field at round trip. So round trip expression in our hand and once we put this condition same that is our threshold condition for amplification of the input field and this threshold condition is represented by this. So if I solve this equation then I will uh, get one information but without solving even solving we have a condition to have the non-trivial solution. The condition of the non-trivial solution as I mentioned if these two are non-zero then this equation will satisfy once the determinant of this quantity is 0. So determinant of this matrix basically determinant of this matrix is 0. So once the determinant of matrix is 0 now is the time to calculate what is going on. So the we calculate the determinant simply. So A R this multiplied by this cross multiplication minus this cross multiplication is equal to 0. A R S minus 1 D R I minus 1 minus C B R S R 1. But you should remember what is the value of A, B, C and D. These are the matrix elements and these values of these matrix elements are already calculated. So these are the matrix element that is in our hand. So what we do right now, so we make uh, R i R s common from, from this expression to this expression and I will have A d minus B c. So A d minus B c if I see carefully A d is this quantity. So A d is nothing but cos hyperbolic of G z which we have here and since it is a threshold condition because I am making a threshold condition I equate the equation under threshold condition. So I write G threshold here because whatever the value of G we are going to impose is basically the threshold condition of that. Now if I try to find out what is my BC. So BC is I multiplied by I minus i it will give me 1 root over of kappa s kappa i multiplied by root over of kappa s kappa i. So it will once again give you 1 sin hyperbolic multiplied by sin hyperbolic it will give me sin hyperbolic of square gz. So bc is simply sin hyperbolic square of gz. So ad minus bc is simply cos hyperbolic square g threshold l minus sin hyperbolic square g threshold l. So cos hyperbolic square minus sin hyperbolic square we know cos hyperbolic square x minus sin hyperbolic square x is nothing but 1. So we will have a more simplified expression by just putting this is equal to 1. So expression is now simplified it looks cumbersome but when I calculate all this relationship is there so we will have this expression. Also here we have 
D and A, D and A are same. So, I can write R s R i D and A if I take common then it should be cos, it should be cos hyperbolic, it should be cos hyperbolic if I take common D and A. So, R s R i multiplied by cos hyperbolic plus 1 that will be our expression here. R s R i minus cos hyperbolic R i R s plus 1 is equal to 0 is our expression. So, from this expression we can readily see that I can have a value of g threshold. So, I can have a value of g threshold in terms of R i and R s. However, cos hyperbolic g threshold L is a series function. So, we need to make some kind of approximation that we eventually do and we will come to that point what should be the value of g threshold. So, cos hyperbolic g threshold from this expression I can write is 1 if I write this and try to solve what is cos hyperbolic then I can by simple algebra I can find that it is 1 plus r i r s divided by r i plus r s because if I write it should be cos hyperbolic g t h l multiplied by r i plus r s is equal to 1 plus r i r s and then cos hyperbolic l is r i r s divided by r i plus r s. Now, r i and r s are very close to 1 because this is the reflectivity of the mirror of two frequencies and it, it has to be very strong or very high value. So, these are nearly equal to 1. Since this is nearly equal to 1, r i should be nearly equal to 1, r s should be nearly equal to 1. So, r i multiplied by r s is nearly equal to 1. So, this entire quantity should be nearly equal to 1. So, cos hyperbolic L is nearly equal to 1. So, that means I can make an expansion of cos hyperbolic. So, cos hyperbolic expansion I will go up to second term because this is possible when the threshold value of the g or whatever the g is comparatively small. And if I expand this we will have 1 plus half g threshold L square which is the expansion of this uh, okay one so here we make another uh, uh, this is 1 plus g threshold square so cos hyperbolic. So, now from this expression what we try to do we try to find out what is the value of g threshold. So, cos hyperbolic g threshold L is equal to this quantity it is difficult to find out what is the g threshold in a compact form. So, that is why we make this expansion. So, after making the expansion we have half g threshold L square is equal to 1 minus r i r s divided by r i plus r s minus 1. So, that quantity basically give rise to one uh, simple expression 1 minus r i multiplied by 1 minus r s divided by r i plus r s. If you make the simple algebra just put it here r i minus r s will be here and take common then you will get this result readily. Now, again r i and r s are very close to 1 because they are the reflectivity of the two mirrors of two different wavelengths and this reflectivity is very strong. So, very strong means here they are very nearly equal to 1. So, r i plus r s is nearly equal to 1 that means this r i plus r s is equal to 2. So, I can replace these things equal to 2. So, if I make this approximation then g threshold this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. So, g threshold simply becomes 1 by L root over of whatever the quantity we have. So, finally, we have an expression of the d g threshold for doubly resonate oscillator and for doubly resonate oscillator we find uh, the expression in terms of r i and r s these are the refractivity uh, reflectivity of the mirror for the signal and idler. After having the expression next thing we will going to compare 
the expression that we have for SRO and if I write these two together, so these two are expression of the threshold of uh, G at DRO and the threshold of SRO and if I find these two expression then we can simplify a little bit because in this case we can see that Ri and Rs is closely equal to 1 so I can simplify but our goal is to find out what is the ratio of the threshold value of DRO and SRO. So now we will going to simplify this as I mentioned I write Ri and Rs is equal to Ri R1 and R2 is equal to Rs for single resonate oscillator because in single resonate oscillator only omega s will going to oscillate. So, I can write the reflectivity here as omega Rs and Rs instead of writing Ri and Ri. So, Ri and R2, R1 and R2, this is R1 and R2 in the previous notation. Now, I just change because these two are very close to each other and same as Rs. So, if I do then this expression becomes root over of 2 L 1 divided by R s minus 1 or root over of 2 divided by L and then R 1 minus R s make a root and root over of R s. So, once we have the expression a, a little bit simpler expression then we are now in a position to make a ratio of G threshold DRO and G threshold SRO. When we make a ratio then 1 divided by r root over of these things and 1 l divided by root over of this. Uh, so, these things 1 minus r s and 1 minus r s root over of these two things will cancel out, l l will cancel out, root over of r s will be there. So, root over of r s by 2 and these things will be there, but r s is nearly equal to 1. So, I can write this nearly equal to 1. So, we will have one expression something like this in our hand. this is the expression making R s equal to 1. So, these are the ratios, these are the 2 SRO and uh, DRO and we have the ratios here and this ratio suggests that it will be 1 minus R s R i divided by root over of 2. So, now G threshold is proportional to the intensity of the pump that we know. G threshold is proportional to the intensity of the pump. Since it is proportional to the intensity of the pump, so what we will do that we make a square of that so that this ratio became the ratio of the power of DRO or the ratio of the intensity of the DRO versus SRO and this intensity is the threshold intensity to have the amplification. So, need to find out what should be the ratio of the threshold intensity of these two quantity and the right hand side we find 1 minus Ri by 2. So, now you can see that R i is a refractive index, R i is a uh, uh, reflectivity coefficient and this reflectivity coefficient for, for this uh, uh, field E i or the frequency omega i, it should be very close to 1. So, if this quantity is very close to 1, the numerator is very, very small. If the numerator is very, very small, we can readily see that the threshold value of the DRO is much much less than the threshold value of SRO. That means the power required to excite the amplification in SRO is much much greater than the power required to excite the amplification in DRO. That is an imp important conclusion that we have. So, we can put the some value also say if Ri is of the order of 0 0.98 which is very close to 1 then 1 minus R i is 1 minus 0 0.98, it is 0 0.02 and now it is divided by 2. So, I threshold for DRO and I threshold for SRO becomes 0 0.01. So, that means the power required to excite uh, or the power required to amplify 
in SRO is much much less than uh, 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 power required to DRO is much much less than the power required to SRO. But there are few drawbacks in SRO uh, in DRO also even though the uh, power required for amplification in DRO is much less but there are some other issues. So, let me uh, describe these issues before the conclusion of this class. So, in SRO what happened these are the modes the allowed modes this is interesting. So, in SRO we have these are the allowed modes represented by the vertical lines in omega axis in the frequency axis and these are the allowed modes and what are the allowed modes can be figured out with this expression. For this allowed modes the question is which should be really resonating there are many modes all these things are there. So, that means if I draw different modes so we have this is one mode we have another modes we have another modes and so on. These are the different modes that we can have this is the schematic picture to show how this mode can look like. But the question is among these modes which mode will really really resonate inside the system which mode will basically amplify or the which corresponding frequencies amplify because all cases we will have. So, omega p is divided to two frequency omega s and omega i and the relationship is omega p is constant. So, omega s plus omega i has to be constant, but there are infinite way that omega i and omega s can constant. So, omega s can have different values and these different values are nothing but these different modes as well as omega i, but their summation is constant. So, if I consider only one case in SRO for where we have one condition one resonating condition. So, this dotted thing is the gain curve of the system because this resonator should have some kind of gain spectrum it will not going to amplify all the frequencies depending on the value of delta k. If delta k is not equal to 0 then we have a gain figure if gain bandwidth that we have already discussed in our previous classes. So, the mode which is close to the maxima of the gain curve will basically going to oscillate and this is shown by this red dotted line. Red dotted circle basically gives you the identification of the modes that will going to vibrate or that will going to resonate in SRO. Corresponding frequency spacing is also shown these are the modes that all are allowed modes uh, in, in, in the SRO. In DRO case on the other hand instead of having one modes we instead of one uh, frequency we have two frequencies that are going to resonate. So, omega s and omega i are the two frequencies that will going to resonate and if it is resonating these two frequencies are resonating then it is not necessarily the modes that in having a maxima will going to vibrate that is the interesting point here. So, now what we will do so omega s these are the allowed modes and omega i these are the allowed modes. Because the spacing is different it will not fall one by one. So, you can see that there is a mismatch between these two points these two frequencies gradually, but there is a possibility that they will again make a, a similar they will again coincide a similar point here. So, these are the two modes where these two values are coinciding to each other. In this case omega s is increasing and in the this case omega i is increasing. Why it is because if I increase the omega s omega i has to be reduced so that the summation of these two become constant. So, that is why if this is in forward direction it is backward direction it is reducing and the frequency spacing is also represented here which is pi c divided by n i l. But the interesting thing is they will going to resonate where these two modes are overlapping to each other. It is something like a vernier scale kind of stuff. So, these two are the corresponding modes which are overlapping and these two are vibrating. But please note that it may not be necessarily the modes that is at the highest gain value. So, gain value is less, but still it will going to oscillate at this particular points or this for these two modes it will going to oscillate. So, since 
this is a very critical condition. So, it is the stability of the DRO is really very critical. So, even though there is the advantage of the DRO that we have less threshold power to amplify the signal, but the problem is here if I want to uh, uh, amplify the signal and the corresponding idler. So, the corresponding frequency modes will need to be coincide like this and they will only then only they will going to vibrate. So, this condition is very critical condition. So, the stability issue will be always there in DRO. So, well students, so let me conclude uh, today's class here. So, today we have learned a detail about uh, the operation, how the operation uh, uh, can done in the DRO system, in DRO amplification system and we find that uh, in DRO we have less threshold power required to amplify compared to SRO, but there are some critical issues in DRO regarding the resonance frequency. So, the resonance frequency had to be coincide for omega s and omega i then only it will resonate and not only that the resonance frequency the location of resonance frequency may not be in the peak point of the gain curve. So, that is which that is why the efficiency eventually the efficiency is not be that much and also the criticality uh, should be there. So, it is very difficult to handle with uh, this DRO system. Anyway, with this note let me conclude here. So, so far we are discussing about the chi 2 effect. So, the chi 2 effect phenomena is almost complete. So, in the next class we will going to start a new uh, brand new topic which is related to chi 3 a higher order nonlinearity different kind of phenomena will be there. So, with this note let me conclude and thank you for your attention and see you in the next class.